Hi everyone, I'm Matt from THKP, and this is going to be the third and final video in our mini-series about making physics-based animations in Flutter. I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with the friction simulation and spring simulation utilities. If not, I'd recommend going back and checking out our prior two videos on the topic. Today, we're going to be working on a hypothetical app called Dander, which is for finding your next pet. Our goal is to add a Tinder-like card for browsing through the possible pets. Specifically, we want a card that can be swiped away, but if you don't swipe hard enough, it'll spring back to its original position. So right now, we have this card, we can't click on it or anything. All it is is just the implementation of the card. Uh, and piece by piece, we're gonna build up the functionality that we described. All right, so what are we actually starting with? So in our main, we've got our classic Flutter Create app, and we're gonna be working in the swipeable card example widget. Swipeable card example is pretty much just a stack. And then our cards are implemented by this method called getCardContents. And all this list of cards is, is a list of a little bit of metadata, which includes a reference to an image, a name, and an age here. Aside from that, uh, there's not really a lot going on here. And then, swipeable card is a just a fancy wrapper around a material card for right now. But this is really where a lot of the fanciness is going to happen in terms of making this card swipeable. So the first thing that we're going to do today is we're going to make it so that you can click and drag on a card and the card will move along with the drag events that you generate as you tap and drag. The first thing we're going to do is create an animation controller, which we're going to use for all the animations of this card. So let's make this and let's initialize this. So just to take a step back, this card animation controller is always going to represent the distance that this card is away from its origin position. And what you might think is like, okay, well, how do we represent anything aside from movement along a single axis? And what we'll do is store another double, which represents the direction. Quick note from future Matt. Uh, direction should actually be initialized to zero here otherwise if you try to reference it before the user drags the card it will cause problems because direction will be undefined back to the regularly scheduled programming and so together we'll always be able to know how to move this card with the value of the card animation controller which will be the distance and this direction double that we store on the card or the swipeable card state. All right, so now what we'll do is we will wrap this card in a, an animated builder. And I realized in previous videos, I had generated this animated builder from a stream builder and always kept this called snapshot before, but it's actually a widget, which is slightly confusing which we're not even using, so I'm just going to name it an underscore, just so that it's more clear uh, how we're using this. Okay, and instead of just having a card, we're going to wrap this in a transform. So transform supplies you with a couple of different constructors, and translate accepts an offset. And now uh, we can create an offset dot from direction. So now we can say uh, direction and it also accepts a distance. So we can say card animation controller dot value. And so this is perfect. Uh, this shouldn't have any effect. We're not animating anything with this. The default value for this should be zero. The next thing we're going to need to do is wrap our card in a gesture detector so that we can start to listen to events from the user tapping and swiping our card. So. Let's do that, and now, so just a detector has a trillion different possible options. We're only gonna need a few of these. Specifically, we will be using on pan start, on pan update, and on pan end. So let's add these. Okay, so what we're gonna do with these three methods is when the user starts panning, 
we grab a handle to where that event took place. As the user drags around, we will update a reference to where those new series of events are occurring. And then finally, on pan end, we will decide what to do at that point, which for right now is gonna be fairly straightforward, but eventually we're gonna be, gonna be able to do fancy stuff where we decide, oh, should the card snap back? Should the card continue to slide away? But for right now, let's just start, uh, start implementing on pan start and on pan update. So um, we're gonna need two additional uh, pieces of state here. And now in the on pan start method, we can say drag start offset equals deets dot. And global position just tells you where it is relative to the whole screen. The, the uh, you know, x, y coordinate at like zero, zero up in the up to top left corner of the screen. Where is this touch event happening? And then and in on pan update, we'll set drag update offset. This is when the user is actually dragging it around. So what we'll wanna do is once we've grabbed onto this drag update offset, we also wanna update the card animation controller uh, and direction values so that the card actually updates as the user is dragging it around. So let's do that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to construct an offset which represents the way the user dragged it. And so let's say we uh, say offset user drag offset. And then what this is gonna be is the drag update offset minus the drag start offset. And essentially this is what we wanna reconstruct when we're uh, translating down below. Uh, or up above, excuse me. But all we have is the uh, card animation controller and the direction, so we'll parse those out of this user drag offset and set them into our direction and card animation controller. So let's do that. Okay, so now we have our direction and we have our card animation controller being updated as a result of our new drag update event. So kind of a lot going on, but hopefully as we were breaking it down bit by bit, it's all making sense along the way. And then the last thing I think it makes sense for us to do um, on pan end, we will just zero out the direction and the card animation controller value. Okay, and so this just means that whenever the user lets it go, the card will snap back to the original position. So, if we've done everything everything correctly, uh, we should be able to drag this card around now. And there we do, there we have it. And we let go and it snaps back. Oh. This is nice, but we might want to add a little bit of an animation back so that it's not instantaneous. This is where our physics-based animations come in. We're gonna do that using a spring simulation. Instead of just immediately popping back to zero, what we can do is we can say, okay, let's construct a spring simulation. If you've watched our video, you know we need a spring description to do that, so let's create our spring description. Okay, and it's complaining again because we need our uh, physics library. Just to comment on these values, so I go into a bunch of detail in my video about what these values mean. But these values, 555, five, five, they give a pretty good snappy response. There's no overshoot, but um, the card gets back to uh, the center pretty quickly. So it's a kind of a nice, satisfying snapback. And so now we will create our spring simulation of the way. So after our spring description, we have start and we have end. Start, obviously, it's where it's gonna start. So, and we know exactly where that is, right? Uh, we have the existing card animation con controller value, which is where we're gonna start from. And that's gonna be a common pattern, just to call this out, right? We, wanna, we want seamless handoffs between these different animations. So we are regularly saying, oh, start at wherever the card animation controller currently is, because we don't want this to be jumping around. We want it to be pretty seamless. 
And for the end parameter, we want it to be uh, snapping back to zero. So, so there we go. And finally, for our required parameters, we have velocity. In our previous video, we just left this at zero, but we actually have a nice way to do something else with this value. So drag and details, if we look at that. Uh, well, let's see. So drag and details has a velocity. So let's go back to our card and let's say deets dot so just, just to point out, primary velocity uh, is specifically along either the horizontal or vertical dimensions. So this isn't what we want. We want to, to allow this velocity to happen in, in any direction. So we're gonna use regular old velocity. And this has pixels per second. And then finally, we use dot uh, distance because it's looking for a double and that's what distance is and there we go so now we have our spring simulation and then the last thing we need to do as we know from our earlier videos is to say card animation controller dot animate width okay and now uh, instead of our card animation controller being driven by these pan update events the spring simulation is going to take over and it's going to start emitting new values for how far away it is. Okay, this looks like it reloaded. Let's, uh, let's see. And there we have it. So whenever we let go, uh, it says, oh, the, the drag is finishing and we want to spring this back to the center. The last thing uh, we want to do is we want to make it so that you can swipe the card away. It doesn't matter how hard you swipe this card, it is always gonna stay there. So we're gonna look at these uh, drag end details and we'll decide, is the drag enough to consider it as enough speed to swipe the card away? I think it'll be good to pull this out into a separate function just cause it can get a little messy. And so it'll be nicer to say, if card meets escape velocity is true, then we can do one thing or the other. So let's let's create that function. And this method is going to take the offset, which is how far or how far and in which direction we dragged the card and the velocity. So what this means is if you if you've dragged it a decent bit of the way, even if you're going kind of slow, will allow the card to continue and get swiped away. But if you haven't swiped it very much, we will, the threshold for how fast it needs to be going is, is higher. So that's, that's the piece of information we'll use to decide whether or not it should be swiped away. So essentially the way it'll work is if the current amount that it has been dragged plus the magnitude of the velocity is greater than, let's say half the screen or three quarters of the screen, allow it to get swiped away. And in addition, we'll also set some minimum velocity so that you can't just drag it to the edge of the screen and it'll get picked up and, and swiped away. So, which just feels a little awkward. If you've stopped, it, it feels a little like a violation of expectation for this card to continue to get swiped away. So. Uh, so let's do that. So we'll say if okay, and we're going to want to compare this to the screen size. Actually, instead of creating an if statement, we'll just return this value directly. Okay, so this looks like a jumbled mess, uh, to be perfectly honest, but uh, if we walk through it, it shouldn't be too bad. And this is exactly why we wanted to pull this out into another function so that we weren't garbling uh, the body of our uh, build method too much. Uh, so we've got drag offset dot distance 
plus the velocity in pixels per second, that distance, is greater than three quarters of the screen width, which admittedly is, you know, maybe we would, should do something a little bit more robust if you have horizontally oriented devices, but we're not gonna do that. Finally, we want to ensure that the velocity, the drag velocity in pixels per second is greater than 400. Now that may seem really, really high, but when I was playing around with it, it just felt like as with, if this was too low, you could get these awkward situations where the card would just very slowly slide off the edge of the screen, which, which just felt wrong. So the implementation of this method is more of an art than a science. So if you implement this as well, I recommend playing around with these values. So here is our swipe meets escape velocity and uh, method, and we'll uh, consume that from below so we can decide whether or not we should spring back or friction forward. Okay, and this value, the value for this drag offset is the, uh, this drag update offset minus drag start offset. So we'll steal that line from above. And then velocity, uh, thankfully, is just on deets. So we'll just be able to say deets.velocity. And so now this is the scenario un under which we want to use the friction simulation. Um, before we get there, I'm just going to add the else for this if, which is the situation under which we will do the spring simulation. All right, so we want to create a new friction simulation. And let's t have a quick reminder. So we've got our drag parameter, which controls how quickly the simulation slows down or speeds up. If we give it a value of less than 1, it'll slow down. In this case, though, I think we should have the card speed up. We've decided that the user wants to swipe the card away, so having it speed up will ensure that the card doesn't get stuck. And then position, this is the same situation from below with the spring simulation. We will take the position from the existing card animation controller value. And then finally, velocity, same as below, will steal the velocity off these drag end details. Okay, and we want to assign this to something, not just create it and do nothing with it. And then we can do our card animation controller dot animate with. Okay, so we've got, uh, so our app has refreshed and now we should be able to swipe our card and see it. Okay, so it's still dragging around still snaps, but we can swipe our card away, which is actually slightly annoying. We only have one card, so let's uh, refresh our app to get it back. All right, so as discussed, this has all the different things we wanted to do. It will snap back if you're not moving it fast enough, but it will leave if you swipe it quickly enough. So there you have it. Obviously, there's there's a ton more things we could add to this to, to get it working more like the Tinder app. Uh, but in terms of our goals for today, this is pretty much it. So now we have an understanding of how to get this nice handoff behavior between the drag and the snapback or the swipe away. Alrighty, well, I said this was gonna be the last video in the series, but it's becoming more apparent to me from making this video that there's a lot more to this experience. So. Uh, I may come back to this topic uh, to do more more things like maybe creating a little bit of a tilt to the card like the way Tinder does or showing how to make an infinite series of cards so you can just swipe, 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 which admittedly is less of a physics-based animation and more of a state management exercise, but still is an interesting problem. So. So keep an eye out for more, and I hope you'll stick with us. Thanks for checking out this tutorial. If you found this useful, give us a thumbs up. And if you're interested in seeing more, don't hesitate to subscribe.